Are you experiencing cravings, unexplained fat gain, anxiety, maybe a little bit of depression? It might be due to poor gut health. Believe it or not, poor gut health has been connected to all of those things. You know, I just uh, read a study on uh, gut health, well, actually probiotic use and depression, anxiety, and they found that people who supplemented with probiotics, there was a 64% reduction in those symptoms. How wild is that just from taking a probiotic? Wow. Just uh, pretty what's cool. what's your opinion on? Um, obviously, you probably, you said that statement. There's probably a a large portion of people that are like, yeah, yeah, that's that's me. How do you go about figuring that out? Would you go to an elimination diet first to add and then slowly add foods in? But would you be your recommendation to somebody who's listening, hears you say that, and is curious to figure out if it's if there's somebody who's suffering from that? Well, I would I would I mean, if you really want to figure it out, a functional medicine practitioner will be your best bet, right? Because they'll do tests. Yeah, you do all the tests. Yeah, they'll do lots of tests to to kind of see if you have like you know dysbiosis, right? Your your gut microbiome is off if there's any parasites or anything like that. Obviously, if you have other gut symptoms, uh, constipation, diarrhea, skin issues, then you could probably bet that there might be something wrong with your gut. But I mean, your microbiome, uh, I mean, they produce a good chunk of neurotransmitters uh, like serotonin. Um, they affect catecholamine production. So these are like chemicals that give you energy, make you feel a particular way. And then cravings. People are like, well, what about cravings? How's that, how's that work? Well, I mean, you're, you're more bacteria cells than you are human cells. It makes sense that you're that the bacteria in your gut will influence the foods or the types of foods that you crave to feed themselves. So, uh, and they've done studies where they'll change the microbiome of mm. an animal or even humans. They've done these even with humans and it changes the types of foods that they actually crave, uh, which is kind of wild. So like based off of like um, the majority of, of bacteria that you have that can influence you because of the types of foods you've been eating. So just kind of like... Um, feeds itself and then craves more of the same. Yeah. So there's this like theory on that, right? Where there's like certain bacteria that feed off of, let's say sugar or, um, or certain types of fiber or fat. And if you have a lot of those, then you're going to crave more of those feet, those foods, because the bacteria is essentially, I mean, here's a theory. The theory is that the bacteria evolved to influence your behaviors yeah. to feed themselves. So it's kind of like you're a zombie. Yeah, it's kind of like you're just being controlled by bacteria. <laughs> yeah, you guys you don't really. Are you both watching that show really right now? Human. Which one? The Last of Us. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. it's so good. Are you? Are That's you watching? Fungus, though. Yeah. Are you on it too? Yeah. What about you, Douglas? No. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I, way, I well, won't commit until he's watching. Oh, no, the mushroom yeah. zombies yet? Until oh, yeah. it's welcome still, back until, until Doug. Well, yeah. by the way, welcome back, Doug. This yeah. guy. Yeah, uh, thank you. Was out sick for a little while. How do you feel? <laughs> He's alive. Huh? How do you feel? He beat the crap no, out of him. How was it? This is round two, yeah? Yeah, round two, yeah. How, how, this one was worse than the first one. No, identical. Really? Absolutely identical, except for maybe one thing It was different. Uh, so I, the symptoms I had was um, basically being really tired and a little bit lightheaded and a headache. That's about it. Uh. Uh, the last time I had it though, I had some type of strange throbbing that was going on in my extremities. So whoa, I don't whoa, know what that, yeah, no, Let's sounds, get into that. Sounds a little bit wild, but it's true. <laughs> yeah. This time I didn't have, like I, I didn't have that. Um, I did have a lot of like joint pain. So maybe I had some inflammation, inflammation going yeah. on there. Uh, the one thing that happened last time and knock on wood, it doesn't happen this time either is I lost so much hair last time. Really? But fortunately, it seems this time I've avoided that. That's not an uncommon Lost symptom hair, huh? that some people huh. got from COVID. I guess it's an inflammatory response that some people get. Yeah, I don't know. Which but is kind of weird. I did not like it. Interesting. Did <laughs> you, Did you, well, first off, Doug has probably one of the strongest immune systems I've ever known in my entire life. At least out of the four of us. For oh, sure. for sure. <laughs> I've known Doug now for, how long have we known each other now? It's been like 12, 13 years? Yeah. I think I've seen you sick three times in the entire time. And right. Each, and each time you're sick for a day and then it's gone. And each time I've gotten what you had, I'm sick for a week. You've done that to me twice now, by the way. <laughs> He's like, I know. I feel so guilty yeah. out here. <laughs> were you, so were you right on the stack right away? Did you get on the stack Oh, yeah. I was doing everything. And how, how soon did you know to even test? Like, were, did, you, did you recognize the same symptoms and go, oh, I better test? Because it wasn't like you were, like, deathly sick. Yeah. At first, I thought I had food poisoning. Mm. And then it became clear to me, like, the next morning that I, I was actually fighting something else yeah. because I, then I recalled, okay, these symptoms are exactly like the ones I had last time I had COVID. So yeah. 
uh, probably is that. So I did test and yeah, yeah it came up positive. I wonder so if it, they've done, speaking of microbiome, I wonder if they've done any studies on uh, probiotics and um, viral infections and, mm. and, their, and their effects. That'd be interesting to pull up to see if there's anything. I don't know, maybe Andrew can look something up over there. I mean, it seems logical that it would help, right? Well, maybe, right? It might because uh, certain probiotics, um, I know the, uh, God, the bacillus strains, I think, are anti-inflammatory. So that might help with the inflammation from certain viruses. Uh, I, when I was sick, I was using seed on a regular basis, but I used it before too. So I'm not sure if there was a difference, Yeah. but it'd be interesting to see if it makes that big of a difference. Now you, uh, that's round two for you. Yes. You have you you've only had, you had it once, dude. I had like a yeah, I had like an hour's worth. You <laughs> he did done. He did. It's so funny. You ever pay attention? Like you're like if you're. I have like super conservative friends, super liberal friends, and how they yeah. respond and how they talk about how COVID got them is like <laughs> it's very obvious where they're at. You know what I'm saying that yeah. shit was bullshit. Yeah, it was yeah. so easy. Yeah, it dude, it didn't even slow me down. Then right I have my day. like liberal friends who got all the shots, all the boosters. Like, man, thank God I got those shots and boosters. Yeah, I, I would have died. I would have so died. Much worse. It was so bad. Yeah. I might have died if it. Yeah. It is interesting. Yeah, <laughs> that was a response. Tough, response hey, listen, get... I, I'm look, I'm I, you know, that was a tough time for me because. Because I'm a high, I'm borderline hypochondriac, so that whole period of time for yeah. me was so exciting. Dude, I just you rubbed your you think on you're it borderline. Fine. Yeah, I don't okay. think you're anywhere near borderline. You think I'm legit, like <laughs> yeah. full full scale? Yeah, oh, Doug, can you please step in, in here? No, I'm not disagreeing with you. Adam. I'm in denial. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, listen, I stuck. Hey, but I stuck to my. Doug texted me before he came in this morning. He goes, "Yo, send me a screenshot of your your negative test for COVID." <laughs> I said, yeah, I got you, bro. I got you. I got a few of those. So I sent it over to him so he could send it to the thread so Sal would be okay with him coming to work today. No, I recognize Doug's thumb in the picture. (laughs) Yeah. I know. That was (laughs) a good thumb. I knew that was him when I saw it. Oh, man. Anyway. Uh, But yeah, so, uh, you know, back to the the conversation about the microbiome. If if that's you, you can even try supplementing with a probiotic. Uh, Like Mm. we work with seed. Mm -hmm. You can try and and see if you notice uh, any symptom relief. And if you will, you'll probably notice it within the first few weeks. Do you take it consistently? I know I do he, every day. So you're consistent. Mm-hmm. I told you how I use it. I'm not. Consi- Only when your gut is off. Yeah. Or, or I know I'm going to eat something that's going to throw it off. Yeah. Like I intentionally know I'm going to go into something that I probably shouldn't have. Mm-hmm. Like I notice a huge difference if I proactively take that yep. beforehand. And yep. It makes a yep. big difference. All right. Today's giveaway is MAPS Split. This is a bodybuilder style MAPS program. Here's how you can win free access. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications. If we pick you as the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section that you won free access to Maps Split. Also, this month, we have three programs that are 50% off. Huge sale. Maps Performance half off. Maps Aesthetic half off. And Maps Hit half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Dude, so. speaking of food, I got to tell you guys a story. So... I took uh, my daughter and my 13-year-old and my two-year-old to my mom's house. And Jessica's always like, listen, make sure your mom doesn't like, she's always trying to offer so much food. And, you know, with Aurelius, we got to be careful with what he's eating right now. He's on a kind of low histamine diet. And, and she's like, he's, and I'm always arguing with him. I'm like, no, she's fine. You know, she's not doing that. You know, my mom, I have an Italian mom, okay? If you've ever been to like an Italian grandma's house. They will offer you. Yeah, it'd be weird if it was, she was like Swedish or something. <laughs> that would make sense, right? <laughs> yeah. But they'll offer you food every hour. Every hour on the dot, they're going to offer you something. So I get there and with my daughter, she's like, hey, honey, what about this? Can I make you that? I got this. I got that. And they're going back and forth. My daughter's like, no, 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 I don't want, no, I'm fine. No, I'm not. And I'm like, mom, I think she's okay. Like, I think she's out of nowhere. My mom busts out like full size candy bars. Where does she get these? <laughs> she get, I see like o- like over my head. My mom's offering like a Snickers bar. I'm like, where Dang. did you get these? Why do you have full size candy bars in your cupboard? That has yeah. to be that has to be one of the. She wants to be the best grandma, dude. She's got. I mean, she's got stashes of food, and like, I don't care what you like. She's got it, and she'll <laughs> offer it to you. Do you think that's like one of the number one arguments with couples? Is is in laws feeding their kids? Like I feel be, like that has to there. be one of the uh, almost every parent that I've talked to that is trying to yeah. make sure they they feed their kids a well balanced diet very early is like yeah wait till he goes to you know grandma and grandpa's like that is the the biggest ch- you know what's crazy about it too is like so we laid the law with all that yeah. stuff and they still they lie 
Yeah, that's crazy. They that's, do. Yeah. That, and they, and what they really, get some weird pleasure out of what, like, yes, just what gets, treats. what gets me so angry is that they think it's funny and cute. Like, it's like, Oh yeah, we won't tell your dad. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it's like, no dude, don't do that. And the kid always sells them out. So that's how, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like if it was up to them, I asked them, they lie. And I'm like, yeah, well, he told me. I'll so, show up oh, and yeah. Aurelius would be like, no, no, blue candy. Blue yeah. Candy. You're like, what are you talking about? Blue candy. I don't know. Yeah. Blue candy. Oh. I'm like, Oh, ever really? comes home. He's doing jumping jacks. And it's like, <laughs> Dude, I know it happens. Dude, so, my grandma, okay, out of out of all your guys' relationships, who gets more mad in that situation? So, do you get more mad at Courtney? Do you get more mad at Jessica in the in well, those situations? Well, so because Jessica's uh, mom isn't around, it's, they're always with my parents. Uh, so it's more of an issue with my parents. Although yeah. my mom's pretty good. Well, and yeah, I know. But who's? Are, do you get more mad about it, or does Jessica get more mad about probably it? Probably Jessica because I understand. You know when you have a friend or a family member that yeah, is a sound, particular you just way? Like, you sound just like Katrina well, right now. Hold on, making an excuse right now. No, hold on. Clean. side of the family. <laughs> Fucking dude, you're just, you're so good. Listen, hold you on. You guys are the same, dude. Let me paint context for you. <laughs> well, we were I driving, don't need to. I have a wife that does the same thing okay. you're about to say right well, now. Let on. me explain. Hold on. You know? Let's say we were driving somewhere and I got us 80% of the way there and then I got lost last minute. And you guys know how bad I am with directions. You guys wouldn't get that yeah. mad because like it's Sal. Like he did eighty yeah, percent right. Like that's really good for Sal. I mean, she so when you're talking, when I understand, I know my parents. Okay, I know my parents, and they're doing pretty damn good. Believe me, compared to how they oh could be, God. they do pretty damn good. So is that the same thing? Katrina yeah, does? dude, well, it's the same bullshit excuse. So I'm like, yeah. listen, if it was my mom, I said I would lay the law. It'd be the last time yeah. she'd be. Hey, listen, if you ever want to see that kid again, you don't feed him like that. <laughs> wow. Scare the shit out of my mom. I will not do it after that. Wow, yeah. dude. But dude. she won't do that. She's just like, well, you got to understand that this is how they do it. Like, I remember the first excuse was. This is how my brother shows love. I'm like, really? That's like, that's going to be your your way of justifying. Doesn't, him getting... your, doesn't your mother love buy, buy him a toy every time he shows? Yes, up? dude. <laughs> this is these that's are so these are like two of the biggest you know fights that we have right now is the in laws with how they feed him and how they they give him stuff. You and, and Jessica so, should create a support yeah. group. I swear to God. Oh, <laughs> I I my 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 grandma. This is a, this is so this is like generational. My grandma used to come up to me and she'd give me a hug and she'd. While she's hugging me, she'd slip me candy like or money. <laughs> you, I Here's swear, a Werther's original. I swear right to pocket. God, she would slip me like we were like it was a drug deal, money yeah. or or candy. Don't tell. Yeah. No, told, or she'd like hug me like this and like put it in my pocket, and I'd be like, "What the hell? Huh, I got <laughs> Don't candy. tell your mom. Yeah, or like yeah. I'd have like five bucks or something like yeah. that. This is a thing. My yeah, dad is, does the same thing. He used to do that too with like my cousins because like they were like super staunch about not having any sugar like uh, my uncle and aunt and he would like send them off with like candy bars and all that stuff. I'm like, okay, I know exactly what I'm up for like with my kids. Right? Yeah. So they're, they're totally bad on that end. And then Courtney's uh, family and the, her parents are more like sit them in front of the TV to kind of babysit them. Like uh, that used to irritate the hell out of me. And so it was like this, you know, you have both angles there. You have like the so treats and then you have like the the TV time. All right. So are, bo so are you both equally upset then? So like yeah. when they go to... Oh, and then we just kind of like balance it on like, okay, how much time do we, you know, have them watch versus them? And then... I think that's I think that's what I've come to is just like, okay, they, they spend 10% yeah. or less of their time with at their grandparents' house. Yeah. So... You know, uh, that one time they do this or that. And and, I, and if I can get them to do it 50% of the time, yeah. you know, then I'm like, okay, I'm I'm yeah. still probably- I see both sides of it. You're like, war. oh, they're going to get treats. I see you know? both sides of it. So on one side, you want to be respected as the parent. And then on the other side, you, you see the value in them having a relationship with- their grandparents and but so I see both sides. Yeah, but okay, so that that is the excuse that Katrina tried to make yeah. with her brother and stuff like that. I'm like, I said, that's such a poor reason because that's an unhealthy way to build a relationship. Build it on something else. Build it on playing, tickling, yeah. playing outside, yeah. jumping in the water. I mean, there's a thousand other things you could build and bond, read, you know, do something else. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, I know the ball's it's in there easy. for you It's know easy. Funny it's the layup, you know? Dude, because like we've been like staunch about it. And like we, we talk to the kids all the time about like making better decisions and whatnot. And so they'll go over to my parents and stay overnight and they'll like say no. And my mom gets like so offended. You know, she like comes at me. It's like, why are you making them be all like healthy? And like, <laughs> like, dude, you listen to yourself right now. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like I'm taking that away from you. <laughs> yeah. You know. So, what do you guys think then? Because okay, every generation raises their kids different, right? So, I think I feel like like the TV is a big one. Yeah. When I was a kid, same like you guys, we were in front of the TV. It, was, it wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. Now we're more aware. Like, you can't watch as much TV. 
what do you guys think it's going to be with our kids with when they bring their kids over to our house? What are we going to be doing that they're going to say don't do? Uh, you know, we're going to be in the metaverse, bro. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. Don't don't bring them outside. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. It's dangerous outside. Yeah, just put your head set on and and you know. Yeah, I have no idea like what that's going to look like. We're going to have to honest. deal with that. <laughs> it's going to be know. really weird. I don't I think if we do a good job with ours that the we'll have this culture around when we're all together with the families that we do physical things, things that interact with each other and so that becomes the norm and then maybe we don't have to battle that so much. I mean, that's my hope is that yeah. we put all the work in as dads when they're young that later on when they get a little bit older and stuff like that that they they want to do that stuff. I mean, I see this like I have a, a cousin uh, Stephanie, who listens to the show, she they have they have a bunch of kids, right? Oh, I love and, they, her, yeah. and she they grew up in a uh, six kids homeschooled house. She turns around, has kids. They do the same thing, homeschooling their kids, and their kids are they're in incredibly intelligent. They live like on a farm. They're used to doing outside. So, and it doesn't mean they don't like to sit down and watch a movie. Or, but it's the culture they grew up in. Yeah, but they grew yeah. that. That's such the norm that the the default to like watching a movie or iPad or TV stuff like that is only because there's like absolutely nothing else to do. Like they'll go find something else to do first and then it's like okay if there's nothing yeah. then maybe but i bet you i bet you it'll be the opposite right it'll be like i'm teaching them dangerous stuff like you know blowing up um firecrackers and oh, yeah. you know like That's chopping wood and like whatever it is it's like you know someone on the dangerous side like i bet you it's that's going to be even less normal. Like everybody's like so bubbled out with the way that they raise their it kids. It feels like that already, don't right? you? Yeah. I feel like that. Like, you, I mean, you're pretty good about getting the boys out and, and like doing some wrist well, stuff. They don't, you there's your, already. You let your kid climb a tree a hundred feet up in the air and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, Justin's so you, a little yeah, tree. Yeah, yeah, so you do yeah, some pretty They're crazy. feral. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how you do that. You know, they they, they don't. It allow... sounds like his kids like get off the curb. He's like, "Whoa, yeah. you see the curb there?" I, I freak it's, out, I bro. Totally it's literally out. like six inches. They're gonna be they're gonna be okay. Hey, the the uh, they don't let kids play uh, like tag. Do you guys know that? What? Yeah, they can't play tag. Is it racist? No, no, oh, no. man. Yeah, yeah. Like that, right? I figured they'd think, find some way to tie to it. No, because kids like run Fat and then they, they'll push each other. Def Red Rover was out a long time ago. That game was totally that was out. the best game ever. Um, there's a lot of stuff. Wait that they till can't, a guy you don't like. Ugh. Yeah, they can't play. They can't play a lot of these games. Uh, uh, what's it called? Dodgeball. Mm -hmm. You don't play. They can't play dodgeball because kids are getting blasted with. You know. <laughs> so I I brought up the I brought up the other day about um the kids and TV and iPad yeah. time, right? What are you guys doing? Cause here's another one that we're, we're trying to work through. And again, I don't, I don't necessarily know. I know the right answer for this. I'm trying to, you know, navigate my way through this is, um, is toys. Like at what point do you think, uh, you know, the, the kids having too much toys mm -hmm. is actually a bad thing. And at what point, too, are you depriving them if you're just like, you got two toys, that's all you get to play with, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, how where, how do you guys manage, you know, the amount? And I don't know if this is as big of a problem for you guys. I mean, I have yeah. a, a mother-in-law who he gets a toy, two toys, like oh, yeah, every that's, week, yeah, that's you know? So it's like compounding, obviously. Jessica's really good. Uh, so she, obviously she runs the house, Jessica's right? Jessica's really good at everything. She's really, well, most things, <laughs> when it comes to the kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. I know. <laughs> I get points every time I record a podcast. <laughs> yeah, you hear that? We're just tallying it up. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be mad at me. No problem. No, she, uh, no she's, she's, when it comes to raising the kids, obviously she, you know, she manages most of that. And I never really paid attention to that. But what she does, which I think is really good, is she has, we have toys, and she brings out like five or six. And then Aurelius will just play with those for a while. And then when he goes to bed, I don't know, once a month or something, she, she trades them out for another four or five. And the, the, the rationale is when there's too much stuff for them to play with, they don't even play with anything. Mm -hmm. They don't focus on what they're going to do. It's too many choices, too much stuff, too much clutter. So she'll have like five or six laid out. And then once he kind of gets sick, sick of those, she'll she'll trade them out. And she gets rid of stuff all You the know, time. as an adult, you guys remember, um, I don't know, when I was in high school, it was a dating, I'm going to date myself a little bit here, right? It was it was cool to like, you know, collect video cassette, you know, movies, VHS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as a, as a kid, like who's had to work in a summer job and part-time during the year and stuff like that, like, you know, I can't afford to have a, 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 you know, infinity number of, of VHS tapes. So had like 20, you know, I get to buy one every three to six months. I could afford to go buy the $20 v VHS or whatever. So when I had a collection of say 25, like video cassettes, I mean, all through high school, I must've watched all of those, 
you know, 60 times mm -hmm, each. Mm -hmm, and yeah. it was always an easy choice for me. Like I'm looking up at my shelf and it's like, oh yeah. Now you go on Netflix, it I takes just, you an hour and a half to Yeah, yeah. like I have, I have way more <laughs> options than I ever have, but then I have, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll end up spending 30 minutes looking for something and then giving up. Oh, yep. there's nothing to watch. I know. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing to watch. That's true. It is. That's true. I mean, yeah, it, I, it highlights your point with, with the kids having so many yeah, choices. That's, I think, a, I think that's a Montessori thing is that they say put out like few toys so they can focus on just those toys to play with and not put, not overwhelm them with just a bunch of stuff everywhere. So, so how have you I'm tackled this? Um, well, I'm not in that phase anymore, but like when we had like toys, just the abundant toys, we would kind of go through and see, you know, we just like grab the toys and like take them out of the room and then just see if they noticed and they wouldn't even notice. And so we would just like kind of scale it down. Um, every so often when we would just kind of see what they would lean towards. And then later on, um, we tried to kind of like incentivize them to uh, sell. So Courtney would like kind of set up this Facebook thing where they could kind of like sell the toys and all this stuff. And they're kind of involved with that. So um, every now and then we do like a spring cleaning and then they would like sell their toys. And that helped because it was like, it, you know, they, they wanted to see it go to some other kid or somebody else. I like that. So you, you have, you're, okay, I have a, an idea that, that, that this I works. had a friend that used to donate uh, toys. Yeah, and donate. Were, we, so we, this we is what I want to do. Like, so I told Katrina what I'd like to do since we just switched and moved and I feel like I could purge like at least 80% of these fucking toys right now. So I want to get rid of a, a big chunk of them. And then I want to build them like this, this shelving that has these individual cubbies. And then I want the, I want to. Wait, hold on a second. Back up. You're going to build it? Well, no, not, you know oh, what okay. I mean, like that. Like somebody will one. build it. Yeah, okay, yeah, somebody okay, will build okay. it. I was like, whoa, this yeah, is yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> this is, this is, fucking three weeks later. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fucking, <laughs> good job, bro. You made fucking six cubbies. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, Sorry. You Continue. Took the cubby Cutting hours. Acre. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm just to build it for you. So, no, so I want to, so I want to have this, Enough these cubbies higher. built, Sal. Uh, and that will be the total amount of toys that yeah, he has. Yeah. And I'll let him fill it up. And then as he, because he's been trained already to ask, I want to go to the toy in the store. We have to to give away one, so that's how I want to do it. It's like okay, let's, right, so, so you replace. So yeah, it. so let's say he's yeah. got thirty two cubbies. Which so one he do you want visual? To replace? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. he can see all thirty two of his yeah. toys, and he's and then he's asking his dad, "Hey, dad, yeah. I want this. I want that." Okay, son. Well, let's go look at your toys. Which one would you like to give to somebody else? Mm -hmm. And then make him choose one to gift before we go buy another one. That's what I'm trying. I like to, that. Now I'm wondering do. if if he's is mm -hmm. you think he's at the right age? Do you think he'd be okay with that at his age? Well, I think that I. It's, it would we'd start training that now. Obviously, it would take a while. For I have no like, idea. That's why I'm asking because I want you know how you know certain age kids like they, they don't know how to share because they don't understand the concept. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so I love that idea though. I had a friend who did that. Who kids were a little older though, like five or six, and when they would get toys for Christmas, they would donate a, like an equal amount of toys to other kids. Yeah, I mean we're yeah. I mean we're turning four in July, so I yeah, think we're we're, we're getting to an cool. age where he 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 oh understands God, already, the con huh? yeah he understands the concept of sharing, understands one or two and mm -hmm. like all those things like that. So I think um, if I organize it right, and I I told her like Katrina, I was like this is such a perfect time because we're we're moving from one place to another. So he won't even re realize they're all gone. We'll make something really nice for him and be like, this is where all your, plus I'm also thinking too, the, the cleaning and organized side too. Like that I want them to have a place. Mm -hmm. Like this toy yep. has this yep. place, this, pl this toy has that place. It helps them organize their mind too. I remember uh, Jessica saying that, of that it helps them organize their mind. And um, you ever hear the, the term, like, like if you organize your client, your closet, you'll organize your mind a little more or they'll tell that to people who feel anxious. Mm -hmm. So I, it's like a, it, the yeah, it lowers I, your anxiety. Yeah, I believe this bit. was. I, I want to say Montessori taught this. I, I want to say, mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty. I like your idea though. I like that too because it combines like them giving, right? You know, not yeah. just getting rid of, but giving. I feel like there's else. a couple they're, things they're in there, part right? Of it, so they have a choice, right? I think. I think he learning to sacrifice, learning how to gift, being organized. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of benefits to it. Now I understand how young of an age he is. It's going to take some extra effort on our part. Mm -hmm to stay on it, right? To, to, to one, cut down to the, say, however many. And I told Katrina, listen, I'm, I'm flexible on how many right now. Like you can yeah. come up with a number, but let's just agree that we have an, a certain amount of toys that he has. And then if he wants another one, or if he gets another one, let's say he gets gifted a toy and we're, and we come home with it. It's like, okay, 
we need a spot for it. Where are we going to put it? Which one are we going to give away to some other kid and then make him choose? And then that well, the new toy goes I like there. That. I'll tell you. Yeah. So I'm in a little bit different phase right now, you know, than that. And it's uh, you're fighting funny. like smoking cigarettes. And yeah, stuff they're like just there. like yeah. into drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> no. Wow! Jeez. One it's drug like, at a time, yeah, kids. Yeah, it's like, you can't, not, I can't, drugs. I can't get him to quit those damn cigarettes, yeah, man. Just, <laughs> just packs after packs, you know. Um, yeah, God, where was I? Like, you, you messed them up, Jesus. Adam. What is no? I got it. I got it. I got okay, it. it's okay. back. Yeah, it's back. It's back. <laughs> so they're they're in this phase now where they're real entrepreneurial. Yeah, and uh, Ethan especially. So they have this thing. It's like called Town, and and so he started out kind of like selling soda and all this stuff and like making all these um, different concoctions himself and like added like grenadine or like and he'd like create. Is all this these a kit? So yeah, you have all these different options to like enhance like a soda. Oh, like, that's great. It, it, so anyway, so he sold all this at school and then it didn't stop there. He like, he's still like kind of thinking and scheming all these ideas. And so he, uh, he knows that that, that prime drinks really popular and all these like kind of like drinks, um, where pe where kids are just like, you know, wanting to buy this stuff off of other kids. And like, he sees a market for this, uh, seven up drink that was like a powder so they have these like powders like sugar-free seven up powders that they put in their water and so he was able to buy it online for cheaper and he's like selling it so his competition selling it for like three bucks he's gonna sell it for one buck right uh, okay and he's it is cost him like you know like 20 cents a little packet and so Anyways, so he's kind of going through this and he's making little bits of money like every single day and he's like selling it to everybody and he just recruited his little brother, right? So, <laughs> so now Everett's like, you know, taking some and he's like, I got three new clients today, dad. No, like, he did it. Like, Are they really doing that right now? Yeah. And I'm That's like, awesome. I mean, it's great and I love it. And it's like, I'm like, can we like spin this now and like get some like healthy products in here? Like, is he paying him commission? Selling sugar is he water. Him, is he paying commission? Or yeah. So <laughs> Ethan's basically running him. And, and so he's given him uh 50% of, of the, uh, the profit that they get from it. And so it's like, and he's kind of like Dude, shelling hilarious. it out to him and then running. And then he's, he's trying to find more people to help him kind of, you know, run his enterprise. I, that's right. I told funny. You, that's that's when, I, when I was a kid, I, I, I signed up a bunch of people to mow lawns for 20 bucks a lawn and they paid my cousin 10 bucks. And I stayed at home, watched TV while he mowed everybody's lawn. <laughs> it's my, perfect. My dad so found out. You, what you hack it, though. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys do all yeah. this. Oh, okay. I, I got to tell you guys, my uh, Aurelius cracks me up. He started saying this phrase. I don't know where he get, gets it from, but like, if he gets frustrated or something, he'll go like this. He'll do something. He'll fresh be like, ah, oh, whole life. I'm like, what? <laughs> he must have heard. He must have heard us, one of us say something like, "My like, whole oh, life, I've been putting up with this shit." Yeah, so like, <laughs> <laughs> he just says it all the time now. He'll be playing, and his, you know, his, his blocks will fall over. Ah, oh, whole life, and we just start cracking oh up. My like, God. What is he doing? <laughs> my favorite is Max's thing with the time. Oh, like he classic. has, he has no concept of how long two or three minutes is, but. Katrina for so long would tell like when it's time to, like for bath time or what that and he'd be like uh, it's time let's go for bath time no 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 I want to play and then Katrina would be like two more minutes so she's done that since the beginning so now he knows to ask for that you know what I'm saying come on it's time for bath time two more minutes yeah, mom and then no you go okay what. fine yeah she walks up to do you guys get minutes. a visual timer no we oh, don't have we, so it's really cool so we have one and it's a, you you turn it and it's like a color changes to show you how much time is left and then they'll learn how much five minutes is, two minutes. Yeah, yeah. Minutes. Right now, I kind of like that he doesn't because then I can lie, right? Oh, so yeah. I can use that two to minutes, my, yeah, five seconds yeah, later. Use that to my advantage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a small window, yeah. dude. You yeah. want to keep that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I like the fact that then there's, there's a lot of power to it that he doesn't know. You know hey, you know what works really well right now with my toddler is reverse psychology. Two years old, I can get him to do anything if I tell him not to do it. Anything I want. I'll be like, you better not put your toys away. And he goes, <laughs> and he puts all his toys away. <laughs> Jessica and I look at each other like, this is amazing. How how would you compare his, his you know, uh, quote unquote, terrible twos to your other kids? My oldest was chill. He was always chill. Um, so he was pretty easy. My daughter, my 13 year old, she had terrible twos, threes, fours, fives, and sixes. It went all the way from two to six. And she lost. I told you guys, one time she threw a, a tantrum at Target Knocked her own tooth out. I told you guys about that once, right? And yeah. she went nuts and hit herself on the floor and knocked her tooth out. So Aurelius is in between. He's He's got the terrible twos. He throws tantrums, but he's not like my daughter was where you're like, do we got, like, what's going on here? Do we have a problem? Are we okay? Do we yeah. call a doctor? Yeah. So um, he's in between, but he's two. And it supposedly gets worse. Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see what how happens. Are, how are your boys? Were they the same, like, as far as that phase? 
it, I think it was like ever definitely had it earlier the ethan it took a little bit longer it was like more like terrible fours for him like, oh interesting yeah so yeah it was different but i mean they both had their moments of like uh i think it's just asserting themselves and like wanting to kind of like push back real hard and and uh but everett for sure was like more like explosive i, I guess would be he's more like he's <laughs> like he's very like he's your twin right ah! like if he doesn't it, if he's just not feeling something dude you like better batten down the hatches yeah you know yeah and you got to let him write it out yeah because the more you push the more they go off yeah that's what you know and i mean he'll listen to me and everything but at the same time like he wants to oh, give his frustration out and then is like okay i need and you just have to leave him alone you know, you just have there, to live, are there traits you guys out. see in them that you know came from you that you wish they didn't have that came from you? Oh, yeah, like ever is super clumsy, dude, and just like <laughs> smashes everything, and he's like got no like you know <laughs> softness and dexterity with like anything. He's broken more things, and it's like you know it's coming. <laughs> And he'll just like, there'll be something like just hanging on the corner of the table and just, yeah. you know, that's how we feel when we it. go that places with me. you, right? You I know. I know. Right? <laughs> so, I know dude. Like, this will either be on I'm Justin's a bull in shirt the China or shop, on the floor. <laughs> just, I got hate that, but turbo it's Turbo or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I, you know what? If I think about it, Aurelius is very cautious which is how I was when I was a kid. So, so Jessica wants him to climb stuff. Yeah. He'll, he'll climb hella slow. Uh, Papa, help. You know, and Jessica's like, ah. Oh. He's like his dad. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> so At least he won't hurt himself. You, as I said, that's a trait you wish you did because Max kind of has a little bit of that too. Where I he's think. cautious. Mm -hmm. Were you like yeah. that? Uh, so, and what I see him doing, I was telling her this the other night, we were actually talking about this. And I said, you know, I was, I was a bit cautious with things that I just wasn't interested in. But if it was something I was really interested in, I would do dangerous oh, stuff. Okay. Yeah. So I, I did definitely stuff where I look back now and be like, that was pretty stupid. Like I probably shouldn't have done that. That was super dangerous. Um, but it was something I was really into. Like we mm -hmm. were at, at a very young age. I was out as soon as I could ride a bike, I was out ramping it, you know, off oh, of yeah, ramps yeah. and going down hills and hitting dirt mounds and coming yeah. back all messed up. Like, so yeah. I definitely did stuff that uh, risky stuff as a kid. But then I also was the type where, you know, if all the kids were doing something, it was something dangerous and I wasn't in and they were trying to pressure me into doing it. I'm like, nah, I'm cool. Yeah. yeah. And so you couldn't like coerce me to do something I didn't want to do. And it was less about if it's risky or not. So, ah, More I, don't, just interested. I don't want it. I'm not interested. Yeah. So I see that in him where he he's like, you know, he still scoots his butt down the stairs, you know, <laughs> even though he could like walk <laughs> yes. up and down the stairs. I was like, that's, that was me. He, he, was he just... still does that. But then he'll, you know, jump from couch to couch to couch. And, you know, he's fallen a couple of times and almost hit the, the concrete slab. And like, so oh, he'll, okay. so he does certain things that it, it, he's risky. Then other things he seems super cautious yeah. about. I didn't get, uh, I wasn't a risk taker at all until I was probably 16 and I got my driver's license. And then I was very risk, risky with the car. But other than that, I never did anything like physically. I mean, I, you know, I did, you know, judo and stuff like that, but I never climbed things and jumped off things and stuff like that. And everybody else is like that. So yeah. <laughs> he won't break any bones, honey. He'll be fine. You know? that's the, that's it. Speaking yeah, of your kids, Justin, because your kids like magic, dangerous. they like magic spoon so much. Yeah. Did you give them the new birthday cake? Flavor? I did. Yeah. I haven't they tried like it? it. Yeah. They, they do actually. They like it. They like still prefer the fruity, but uh, that was like their second favorite. So. Um, yeah, I, I had brought that home because we just finally, and I'm so glad now that they send it because it was like a limited, uh, flavor. It's forever. permanent now. And now it's permanent. Oh, it so, is? Yeah. yeah. Birthday cake is permanent. Are you sure now. about that? Positive. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I thought it was they just emailed. A... Yeah. And that's why they sent, like sent us over like, cause I still have one. I they always have like these cool featured flavors and then we are late to the party in mm. terms of tasting. Have you tried so, the birthday cake? I one? haven't. Ma Max has had it. Katrina. So Katrina took some home and I'd seen him eating them and she says he loves them, but I haven't had it yet. What are the macros on that again? For Because someone's listening right 150 now. 150 calories for a cup. And what's the protein? 13 grams. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. do your, how often do your kids eat it? I mean, it's it's kind of like off and on. Like, so it, I would say probably, I don't know, every kind of four days or so. Oh, okay. Like I'll have like, yeah. Like oh, like Max eats daily. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you do it dry, right? He yeah. eats it dry at school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what yeah, I don't. Fact, do I, any kids eat it with milk anymore? Like, I, I, like he doesn't. None of my kids he's, eat. No, he's, he's, Nobody I don't pours even know if he, milk and cereal. Mike. I don't even know if he's had it like that before, are you to be psycho? honest with you. Like, 
He does those little cups, you know, the ones where you have your hands, but he, we just don't obviously use them. Oh, the maybe top. that's why. Like, they've trained him yeah. uh, now to just eat, like, dry. So he, he prefers it. You know what he likes, too? Like, I'll take the waffles out, and he doesn't want me to toast them sometimes. I'm like, buddy, it's cold. It's like out of the yeah, freezer. He's a fruit yeah, frozen? Yeah. yeah. They eat waffles, too, without syrup and yeah, butter. I'm like, Yeah, Ugh. he likes it straight like that. Or if I just drizzle a little bit of honey on it, he just yeah. lets it eat it straight like you that. Guys I don't some, understand it, dude. You guys yeah. want to hear something weird? When I went to Italy as a kid, so I don't know if this is a thing in Europe, but it was in, my, I guess, my family over there. They, when they poured cereal, they would pour the milk first and then they'd add the cereal to what? the milk. What? That's actually smart. What? Well, like, it, it keeps it from getting soggy. Like the. Well, I mean, you eat it right away. It. What's the difference? But they pour milk and then they throw the cereal in the milk. You have to versus- eat it right away. I told you I broke up with a girl because like I was <laughs> over eating cereal. cereal. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and I was on the phone oh, and yeah. she was talking forever. Yeah. And the cereal I'm like, got- I got cereal. <laughs> <laughs> I was so mad because all my frosted flakes got all soggy. And you dumped her. Yeah. <laughs> That's how important the relationship was. Oh, just, speaking of relationship, oh, I want to hear about this show. Is it a show this that you listed over there, Milf Manor? What is that? <laughs> what is that? I'm so glad you brought this up. What was that? Um, yes. It, so this is how ridiculous TV is now and like, like programming. Right. So, I mean, you've seen Temptation Island. You've seen kind of these accelerations, of these dating shows and all this stuff. So the latest, I think this is like a TLC show. They decide, oh, well, you know, there's a whole category. I guess they looked on uh, Pornhub or something, right? Because <laughs> they're just like, yeah, MILF's a big thing. So let's get all these moms on an island, or I don't even know if it's an island, but it's it's basically, they, they put them all in one place, and they're all going to be dating these guys that are half their age. Okay. <laughs> no. Now the twist is <laughs> no. their mom is there. So wait, wait. they're going to be dating everybody else's moms. Wait, 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 hold on. Wait, 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 wait. The, the, so the sons, the, the sons are the ones that are coming onto the show with their moms. With their moms, and they have to stay with their mom and then while the moms, they date somebody else's mom. And the, and the moms are dating the other guys. Does that make sense to you? No. Okay. <laughs> let, let, okay. Let's. I let's, think it's pretty let's clear. Use, let's use my mom and myself as an okay, example. Let's, well, okay. You're going to go on us. the show hold with on. your mom. Okay. Here's, here's I'm going to go on the show with my mom. He's going to date you're your gonna mom. You're going to try and date my mom. Oh, like that? Yes. You're gonna, and I'm going to try to date your mom. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm interested. This sounds really funny. It's, uh, dude, Shut this up. is like you Jerry Springer. Yeah, no, <laughs> you liar. Oh, Try to act like you're. Are they okay? They all single moms. I'm assuming. Right? Well, I would. Yeah. I would. Yeah. Think so. I mean, <laughs> well, dad that, has to stay that, home. Does I mean, that I honestly, who that's knows these a, days? That's but, the twist. Yeah, the twist. <laughs> twist By the way, <laughs> they're all married. Yeah. Damn, like it needs any more twists. <laughs> Wait a minute. So this is fucked up. Hold on a second. So that the guys yeah. are the guys are hanging out with each other. Yeah. And like, they're like, can you imagine? This? He's like, bro, this you better treat my mom right, yeah. dude. He's like, is that bro? Click on that bottom left picture. Let me. He's all me and Karen, bro. Last night, Karen, that's like, my mom. It's like, dude. Oh, wow, there's some hot moms. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Your mom's got some Are those them? Bro. Is that them? <laughs> yeah, that's them. That's the show. Hey, you know what? Those- How they're young, young moms. I mean, here, here are the guys. Yes. Oh, yeah. God. They're a bunch, they're, of, they're a bunch of kids. Bunch yeah. of douchebags. Oh. It's, I mean. Okay, so you know what might be weird Who's about most this? likely to hook up hook up with one of our moms out of the three of us? Well, hold on a second. You. Huh? <laughs> We're not <laughs> You're totally that guy. Yeah. I would totally yeah. hook up with Sal's mom. Yeah, there's again. a reason. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> there's a reason why you've never met our moms. Yeah. Have you met? Yeah, Mrs. exactly. Mom? You're right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. My mom. Yeah. I was. I was like safeguarding her though. Yeah. Yeah. Trust me. Adam's, Adam's a predator. <laughs> you're the prey. I'm just kidding. You know what would be weird about this show? Have you ever met? Like you ever meet a woman or you know whatever, and and you think she's attractive, but then you meet her dad or her son or whatever it looks like him and then it's like oh yeah, yeah like what if these guys are like they're like oh that she was so hot and then you meet the dude and you're like oh you look like your mom yeah weird. i wouldn't be surprised if that happens to at least one yeah you know what i'm saying it's one like of them that weird. looks like looks like the mom bro so hold on how many episodes did you watch <laughs> I, I haven't watched any i just saw okay. the concept dude okay. in the trailer and i was like appalled but i i mean yeah i could see is it netflix it's interesting is it netflix no, that's I think on? it's said tlc tlc I this uh, is, that's the, that's the network, isn't that? Where is that? Yeah, network? I have no idea. I don't know it's, what. Like, um, if yeah, they TLC. Sold it. It's like I don't know. No, that's a channel, right? It's it's a channel. A, that's the yeah. network, but that's normally on. Watch your, on Discovery there Plus. You go, there, there you go. go. That's there the you, can, you can go thing. see it. Well, now. You got <laughs> <much> <laughs> of, <laughs> Doug, wow. Doug's. I don't know what the magic box is. Yes. Listen, <laughs> I don't know what the talkies. That's it. Hey, I got to tell you guys about a study, a groundbreaking study. You guys ever read studies and think to yourself, who funded this? All the time. Why would they even? All the time. So what do you guys think would happen if you take men and then you add 
give them testosterone. Do you, you think imagine? their libido increases or decreases? <laughs> Ooh, let's think about that for, I don't know, immediately, of course. Yeah, so so this is the, t- the article. This is the article. Uh, smearing testosterone on men makes them into horny beasts, scientists find. And then it says we're shocked. And it's surprised to absolutely no one. Mind scientists blown. have discovered that literally smearing testosterone onto the skin of young straight dudes makes them unbelievably horny. I like how they put that. Unbelievably. Like, what's that all about? (laughs) Why do they fund studies like this? Well, did you, okay, so when you see a study like that, do you right away go look and see who funded it and if there's any sort of promotions or anything attached to it? I don't don't know. I mean, there's there's a lot of studies going on with uh, testosterone right now because of the declining rates in testosterone. So it's like, we've talked about this on the show before. Um, The rates, uh, testosterone rates in men have been declining for decades now. Mm -hmm. To the point where an 18-year-old man today, I think 18-year-old, would have the testosterone of like a 50-year-old man in 1980, something along those lines. So it's like really, really dramatic. So there, there's lots of studies going on with testosterone, behavior, cognitive performance, brain development, health, and that kind of stuff. Because uh, this is an issue that's on the horizon, or actually it's in front of us right now. You know now, what so. I wonder about that? Because, I mean, it, it is promoted so much lately like in terms of like the over the counter of accessibility and availability now versus mm-hmm. like when we grow cuz they did have the test boosters and they had yeah. all these kind of like uh, crappy versions of it but like what you know do they do people have access to now besides like kind of going bypassing um, a physician. Well, oh, uh, well, there's herbs and stuff like that, but testosterone. About peptides and stuff. Yeah, peptides, they don't really have any, I don't think, that raise testosterone. I know they have growth hormone releasing ones, but testosterone replacement therapy, you guys know this, obviously, we've talked about this, is exploded. Yeah. It was, if like 15 years ago, 20 years ago, if you went to the doctor and your testosterone was low or you had symptoms of low testosterone, they're not going to put you on anything unless you're so low that you're sick. They wouldn't touch it. Now, um, I mean, you could, I mean, like the place we work with, like they meet you digitally uh, online and then they mail it to your house. That was unheard of a couple of decades ago. No, it, and we've talked about it before. It, it, it closely mirrors the medical marijuana field. Just I mean, that's exploding. What, yeah, no, that's what, it, what it's looking like. Isn't the uh, test booster supplement space like one of the largest as far as money wise i think one of the most profitable but i wouldn't say the largest i don't think it's the largest i don't think it's close to the largest. i think it is bro could you look it up Douglas? i think I, fat burners uh fat protein powder fat burners yeah, okay so the reason uh, why i don't think that just because you're talking about that's like performance and people that are into yeah. working out like even people that don't work out are taking test boosters they are There's but a you're, much larger but you're also automatically have segmented your market to just men because women aren't taking testosterone booster, you know, boost supplements. Yeah, that's fair. So that's, mm-hmm. I think, why it would be a smaller market. But I know they're profitable because these the markup on testosterone boosters, their margins are huge. Do they t- they typically all have the same four or five ingredients too, like the ashwagandhas, the horny goat weed. Like there's a handful of things that like have proven to show that it- zinc, uh, like zinc, vitamin D, boron will probably be in some of them. Um, and then you know, because if you have deficiencies in those. What does that say? Five million, three hundred five million dollar market. Yeah. So compare that. Give me, give me uh, fat burners now. So the fat burner supplement market. Oh, that's got to be a. That's got to be at least a billion, I would say, or double. I mean, three hundred five billion is is a, is a, or a million is a lot. Right there. It is. Yeah. But what does the fat burner market look like? Uh, thirty four billion. Oh wow. Thirty uh, uh, thirty nine billion. Oh yeah, so way more, dude. Wow, okay. way more. Well, not, that's not even close. No. No. So fat burners, I think you're top number one. Yeah. Pro, you got protein powders are at the top probably. Cause remember we talked to our friends in the supplement space. What do they say? You bring them, you, you, you have small margins on your protein cause that's so competitive. And then you bring them in and the way you make your money is with your pre-workouts, your testosterone boosters and your fat burners. Cause the margins are so big. Wow. So it's like that Costco model where they, they sell, they sell stuff at a loss. God, you, know how, you, I, you know how wrong I was right there? That's like so far off. That's not even close. Yeah. Yeah. 34 billion. One compared of us to- was right though. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I forgot I had something for you to bring. I had something to bring up that you were wrong, and I was it really? Yeah, of course. You know, it's yeah. nothing. Don't lie. You know that people like DM us stuff all the time. Do they really? Oh, here's something to just yeah. totally counter. Bring it up. <laughs> like I don't, I don't care, dude. Uh, oh, 
Dude, okay, so you know how I'm like super into like origins of like where um, these a lot of these movie ideas and things kind of come out yeah. of and all that. Like, and we kind of went down the rabbit hole of one with like the Matrix and, and Terminator and how they like that one lady claimed like she wrote the whole thing. You yes. know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you guys know where like Stranger Things came from? No. Yeah, so it's actually based off of like uh, this experiment, the Montauk Project. Montauk, uh, am I saying that right? Montauk, Montauk yeah. yes. So this was like a, a, I mean, I guess it's a verified like um, it tied into like MK Ultra where they were like experimenting with kids. What? Yes, and and you know, know this is also the uh, the area where they found these weird animals. Remember that one that was like it. it I mean, they thought it was like it washed up on shore and it had like all these parts like eaten off of it and it looked weird. It almost looked like, so it was a, a like a raccoon, but just had been eaten. So it looked like this weird, it had like a beak and, and they thought it was some mutant like creature. No. And was that, did they, the Montauk that? Uh, monster, I think is what they called really? it. Really? Yes. So look, that well, up. Yeah, look, look it up. So give me some context, but where did you come across this? Were you going uh, in yeah. on the show? Were you like looking at history to the, the Stranger Things? Yeah, I just kind of like kind of perused. Hold like, on, was this so? Was so? Let me. So was this like a government funded like where they were trying to to see if they could find kids with like psychic ability and yes. stuff like that? Whoa! Yeah, this must have been Cold War era stuff. It, it, yeah, I mean, this was. I think it was the seventies. Yeah, it I must think. have been. Yeah, so dude, so much crazy shit happened during the Cold War because of the threat of nuclear war that we funded. We funded yeah, the uh, men who stare at goats and all that. That stuff. was yeah, real. That was we actually real spent thing. millions of dollars. What's that one? On remote viewing. The, yeah, remote the viewing. The men that stare at goats. That's a uh -huh. movie about about the whole process. Uh, about being able to basically like telepathically kill a goat uh, from afar. <laughs> real, that was like a real test. Like yes. we were trying to do that. They spent millions of dollars on remote viewing, where they would have people who claim to be psychic, and they'd have them draw out things that they could see at a distance and they wanted to see if they could we could spy on Russia with psychics and they actually spent money millions of dollars on on this kind of stuff wow yeah i know it's yeah. crazy there had to have been something there for them to go that deep well, and spend that kind of money right yes, there's been there's, there's, there's no been way some you... people that have have done it and have gotten through all of these walls of the government and and were able to read like like classified documents and then re like literally like write it down and then give them like a, a password. So code. if you wow if, yeah. really yes. So if you look at it doesn't the, make any sense. If you look at the research on this, it was better than uh, random. In other words, it was they were they did better than than what you would get like people just guessing. But it wasn't good enough to invest money in because it wasn't dependable. But there was something there, which is really weird. So yeah. they kept spending money on it. Was there was there a good movie or good doc on this? Was there something like that? Well, that yeah, the, the silly one was Men Who Stare at Goats. is an actual movie with- um, It was a, like a- George Clooney? George Clooney, yeah. Was it a spoof, like a spoof or whatever? Like, it wasn't like- Kind of. I mean, it, it was tongue in cheek, but it yeah. was like, yeah, kind of somewhat accurate, I guess, in terms of like experiments that they were uh, conducting. Mm. So, but yeah, so this- this was actually based on, and so they got the idea. Why I brought up the Montauk monster too is because of the Demogorgon and all that stuff that they have, like yeah. you know, they're like these monsters. So it's it's also you can kind of see how that might have inspired that. You know, there's some theories right now that they're using uh, DMT because they think that they're act people who go on DMT are actually seeing alternate dimensions with other beings, and so they actually th there's some theories that they're doing studies where they're having people try to communicate with these other beings. Have you heard about this? No. Yeah, like the elves. Yeah, yes. so here's what's yeah. weird. So people who, who were on DMT, a large percentage of them see the same kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. you would think if it's a hallucination, that it would be super random or whatever. Well, or it'd be yeah, connected to your thoughts and memories visions. and brain. Yeah, but like they all see like, what they call them like uh, the, the elves and they're like, they're working on machinery and, and they're engineers. And then there's like these evil entities and they all look the same. So the, the, they're saying, oh, maybe they're investing, you know. I mean, have you ever noticed yeah, that with, like, I, f I find that with uh, psilocybin like that. So like when we've done like shrooms before and we're looking at like the clouds, I find it interesting that Katrina will see some of the same images that I'm seeing. Like yeah. he, they're obviously all made up in my head. I'm looking at this. We're looking at just regular clouds, 
But yeah. then when I'm expressing the detail, she's able to to finish the detail. It's all cotton candy. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> a little more detailed it. than uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, have you not experienced that? Have you not experienced like seeing well, so being, the, uh, being on psilocybin and not yeah. seeing something so the, similar to someone else? Yeah, saw? the theory is is that because we're all human, that our brains you're, are gonna, you're, you're immediately patterned it yes, out. Yeah, in very similar ways. Like, so that's the alternate explanation, which is yeah. it's not alternative realities. It's actually that we're all humans and our brains all wired similarly. So we're all going to see similar type of patterns, like faces, yeah, skull, snakes. Ooh, skulls, things like that. Yeah, so yeah. faces is one. Snakes is another one. Um, I don't remember what the other one was that are quite common. And they think it has to do with evolution. Like we, we had to be able to see faces to make sure there were no predators and also to mm. read each other's faces. And then snakes was another one because they probably killed a lot of us because they were poisonous. Spiders, I think, I was another one. ice cream. I don't know what that means. Say what? <laughs> what? Yeah, cheese, cream. blocks of cheese. <laughs> exactly. Doug, see. did you find the Montauk monster? I did see something on that. Let me pull that up. I've been uh, researching DMT as well. <laughs> <laughs> Doug's we, research. We got you all over the place. His Google searches, I swear, he's on a yeah. list. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, so 10 years later, the oh, Montauk is. monster is still a weird, gross, darkly mis a dark mystery. It says. Wow. You know what's crazy about this kind of stuff is uh, maybe, I don't know, three three decades ago, so giant, better picture? giant squids were all theory. Mm-hmm. And now we know that they're real. You know what they find? Mm -hmm. You know how big giant squids are? They're, they well, hunt uh, whales. Mm -hmm. Whales. So they'll find sperm whales with big markings on it from being attacked from giant squid. That's how big yeah. these giant squid are. And I think Japanese researchers caught one on camera. So you're talking about like a sea monster. Literally, mm -hmm. that's how big it is. is that, that's it right there, huh? Yeah. yeah. That is weird looking. Looks like someone threw their... Through a dog or something. Like that. Yeah, so it was unclear because it was it, like it looked like other animals had kind of taken pieces of it, but yeah, Th yeah. those are like real images right there. No, yeah, 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 that's real. So, I don't know, man. You guys ever go to uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not uh, Museum? Yeah. Ever Where's that? that at? God, where was it? LA? But they have one in San Francisco as or well. San Francisco. I think. Mm -hmm. You ever really? been there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've never been there. But. So there's a lot of uh, like fake artifacts that people would put together. Like there was this mermaid skeleton that for a long time people debated was like a real dinosaur animal. bones uh, yeah <laughs> no. just like dinosaur bones. <laughs> those are real <laughs> together <laughs> no man what have i done <laughs> how do they know <laughs> anyway good, oh, good stuff God. do we have any shout outs for for today oh dude i don't think i do have one you know what you should do shout out uh, our homegirl becky oh dr becky campbell give her some love yeah dr becky campbell what's your instagram at dr becky campbell that's it easy <laughs> at dr becky campbell functional medicine Doctor, she's phenomenal. I'll be interviewing her and her co-host, Crystal, later on. But great information, uh, also very entertaining. So go check them out. All right, check this out. You're not what you eat, you're what you digest. So if you eat a high-protein diet, if you're an athlete, sometimes you find eating those extra calories is hard to digest. Well, digestive enzymes can actually help. And there's a company we work with called Massezymes. They make digestive enzymes for people like you, people who are fitness-oriented. Go check them out and see if they help your digestion, help you assimilate more of those amino acids to fuel those muscles. Go to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mindpump10 for 10% off any order. All right, here comes the show. First question is from What Mallory Eats. You've been talking a lot about zero calorie food and how this is not accurate. Does this mean sweetener and diet beverages have calories? If they don't have calories, what other foods and drinks are actually zero calories? It, it could mean that they don't. It doesn't necessarily mean that they do. This is from that conversation we had on the podcast. It's right? my, it's less than well, what they're able to get away with. If a serving size is less than five calories in it, they can say zero. This is why so if it has four calories in a serving size, they can say zero. So uh, could some of these diet drinks possibly? I don't know. Uh, I mean, you'd have to be more specific which ones. I think they're zero because if you look at a can, a diet soda. It's uh, a can is a full serving and it says zero calories. You, yeah. there, this is like Tic Tacs, right? You look at Tic Tacs and it says like one Tic Tac is a serving, zero calories. But obviously you eat the whole box of all. Right. Or the I can't believe it's not butter thing that says zero calories. Yeah. But then that's because what right. I think four sprays right, is, right. Is, is what the serving yeah, is. No, I mean, usually, you know, calorie free uh, diet type foods do have zero calories. But I do want to say this. That doesn't mean... It's not going to have it's a innocuous. negative effect yeah. yeah, on your your ability or your chances of, of burning body fat or gaining body fat. Now, I don't want to get into the whole like debate as to whether or not 
the artificial sweeteners affect your, you know, your ability to metabolize glucose or insulin sensitivity. There's some debate, a little bit of debate there. Really, what I experienced as a trainer is that because you, there's a, there, it's more of a behavioral effect. Because it's sweet, it tends to change your palate and your cravings and make you crave more sweet things. Mm -hmm. And because these drinks come with zero calories, there's this, uh, like, there's no there's basically no barrier. There's, there's this perception that it's, it's innocuous. I can have as many as I want. And what you end up with is having one diet soda, two diet sodas. And if anybody, if you've ever worked with anybody who consumes diet sodas, you'll notice they have a lot throughout the day. Yeah. It's never just one. Um, and that changes your behaviors. This is why studies on diet sodas, when they're controlled, when every calorie is counted for, Yes, there's zero calories. Yes, the person can lose weight when they replace calories with zero calorie foods. But in the real world, okay, where everyone else lives, when people consume zero calorie diet foods or sodas, they don't lose weight. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they don't lose weight is because they make up for those calories in other places. And this is why I never used, I never used artificially flavored sodas or diet drinks as part of my strategy with my clients, unless it was like a competitor mm -hmm. or somebody who's counting every single calorie or macro. In which case then, okay, you know, but um, it's just not a good strategy. I had a, a big discussion with Lane Norton about this on a, on a live IG. And, you know, I said, he, he brought up the studies that were controlled. I said, yeah, but the observational ones and the ones in the real world, they don't show weight loss because it makes people eat more. Yeah. People end up eating more as a result. Yeah, yeah. And, in, and in regards to the ones that have calories that you, you're you not for sure the total amount, I think, I think this is the reason why we always recommend that people go the whole foods route. Does that mean that I would never let a diet soda or a, I can't believe it's not butter type of thing in the occasional diet or whatever that and you and you make that choice to to minimize the amount of calories? Not it's that's not the worst thing that's going to happen, but if you build this diet around all these processed foods that are, you know, low cal or zero cal and like your, your whole diet is comprised of all these packaged things, really really tough to get a really good accurate number on what my you know, my metabolism is. And you're going to overeat. Yeah. You'll all, you'll almost always overeat. They're hyper palatable, zero calorie foods. And what happens with, and what's happened for a long time with the food industry or the diet food industry, I should say, is all they account for are calories. What they don't account for are how these foods affect people's behaviors because it's behaviors that drive how we eat, how we exercise, how we move, the choices that we make. So, okay, yeah, there's zero calories, but then does that encourage behaviors that make you crave more of other types of foods or eat, want to eat more it's in the general. novel stimulus without any of the sustenance. Right? Yeah. And, so and it's like, it just promotes more of that. I want to, I want to keep uh, consuming something. And it does. You, you, you end up eating more. And again, this is why studies show that people don't lose weight unless it's everything is totally controlled for, in which case they do lose weight, but nobody eats that way. Nobody eats that way. Everybody eats and they follow kind of their, you know, how they feel and whatever. And so it just doesn't, it's not a, it's not a great strategy, but in terms of the conversation with, um, you know, the FDA's, uh, what they allow you to say on the label. Um, I think diet sodas are in fact, zero calorie, but like the, like you said, that I can't believe not, I'm not, you know, it's not yeah, it'd be how they define the serving size. Yeah. Like, and then also the like indicator. protein bars and stuff like that. Like I'd be really, if a protein, the most competitive thing with protein bars is how good they taste, right? And how high of protein they have and how low of calorie, right? Yeah. So that's like the three, that's like the three things like, oh, is it low, lower calorie? Is it higher protein? Does it taste good? And so if you don't think that these companies are going to skirt those lines as closely as possible to- Didn't you say 20% is the- Yeah, twenty up to 20% FDA allow, allows them to be off. So you got to know that if you're in the business of- making your bar look lower calorie, higher protein, lower fat or sugars, you're going to skirt those lines so you can get away with I it. It would, if, be, it would be in their best interest to do that. I wonder if they would do something like this. They would, because it's 20% up or down, yes, right? Yes. So I wonder if they'd be like- You go 20, you go 20 up on like protein, protein 20 down on carbs. Of course, of yeah. course. Yeah. So that, I mean, it, it makes sense that they would, if you, they weren't doing it, it's almost silly. I mean, because they are allowed to get away with that and they're in the market of- showing that they're low. So it's just not a good strategy to build your regular plan or eating plan around a lot of these packaged foods that allow these, this percentage to be off. So you're far, but you're far better off disciplining yourself for at least a few weeks or a month of eating whole foods and at least getting a really good handle of, okay, this is, I gain weight on this. I lose weight on this. I maintain on this. So you have a really good understanding of where your, your calorie intake should be. 
And then, of course, then, okay, oh, I'm on the go. I don't have time, so I get right. this bar. And it's like, you know, 20% on one on one protein bar being up or down is not going to make the difference of you putting on a you know pound or two of body fat. So I think letting it, allowing it in the diet occasionally is not a big deal at all. But when you are building and trying to figure out, oh, where where's my, my caloric maintenance at? And you have all these random foods you eat out and stuff like that. It's like, man, that's really Impressive. tough to get a, a precise number that way. Next question is from Z Bolson five. If abs are made in the kitchen, how can you build thicker abs? Can you train them more frequently than other body parts? You know, there's this like myths mm. around core training, Strength that, training. that somehow yeah. the core, uh, the muscles of the core respond different to exercise than other parts of the body. They respond just like any other muscle in the body. So if you want to build abs, okay, now why would you want to build abs? They're more visible. If your abs are more developed, they're going to be more visible at higher body fat percentages. How would you develop a muscle? Resistance. Mm -hmm. So you want to do high resistance core exercises, not 50 reps of crunches, but you know, 10 reps of something that, you know, and you want perfect form, of course, really, really good form. Which you barely ever see. No. Right. So to, to have that kind of focus of less reps and like more of a strength focus with your core, um, yeah, that's that's one that if you incorporate that, uh, and and you do a cycle of of just pure strength training with your with your abs, like you're going to see that uh, huge growth. results, yeah. huge yeah. results. Because it's one of those things that I think most people do not do. I no. think it's up there with like when you think of like people doing sit ups and crunches. How often do you ever see somebody doing five to ten reps of, mm -hmm. of an exercise? Rarely ever. I mean, you said ten. You can doesn't you can do five. Yes, you can do like yeah. five roll ups. You know what I'm saying? Like I love to do that. Like, I used to do sets of one or two. I would do uh, dragon flags, weighted crunches. Yeah. I would do dragon flags, which that's an exercise Bruce Lee used to do. Oh, yeah. uh, Rocky Four. Sylvester Stallone did it in, in there too. And that is a high tension. <laughs> it's, of course, that's why I did it. That's a high tension exercise, and I would do like two to four reps. Oh, yeah. Super slow, real controlled. And my abs just developed from doing that. But you never see that with core. Now, part of the reason I think is because with core, with um, I mean, look, with all body parts, this is true. But with the core in particular, if your form is off, it's not going to work really well. Yeah. So I think- it's Part difficult of the to load too. Yes, yeah. but but it's really about tension. Well, so you can't even do a perfect sit up. And where that saying do it slow. And where that saying came from though is that it, you could do all the abs you want and get super strong abs if you are sitting at twenty five percent body fat. Yeah, you ain't gonna ever see them. So there's there's some truth to that. And I know everybody that, has abs, right? Right. Yeah. So there is there is some truth to the abs are made in the kitchen. I know that it it makes a, a viral video to go counter that message right now, like to say that, but. The truth is it, you can do all the sit-ups you want and, and, and phase it all the ways you want. And if you don't lean out to a certain point, you're never going to see those. So there is some truth there. But uh, to think that there's not value in in doing like low rep uh, crunches, sit-ups, you know, knee-ups, right. things like that. Or, Cable is, chops. Yeah. You can actually benefits. build the size of them, right? Not just reveal them, which, right. yeah. which I know is, is a big push. That's why I would say abs are made in the gym, but they're revealed in the kitchen. That'd be a better, better phrase. Oh, so smart. Oh, my God, dude. You're so genius. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is from Don't Worry, It's Just Courtney. Is there anything I can do to begin to address imbalances that I'm noticing in my upper body while I'm in the middle of running a program? You know, Honey, when I, why did you ask this question? Yeah, you know, it's, not, it's, it's not my Courtney. Don't worry. Not, yeah. You know what I know? Okay. So w when I first learned correctional exercise as a trainer, there's you, you, it's very individualized. You identify imbalances in someone. You're very specific with the types of exercise that you apply. And this, this is still true. But as I got more advanced, as I learned more about correctional exercise, I realized that 80% of the way there, you could get simply by doing controlled unilateral exercise. Now you're going to get all the way there and you're not going to rehab as well by doing this. But if you're talking about muscle imbalances, one side stronger than the other, more developed than the other, your hips shift one way, one shoulder rises a little bit, just train unilaterally for like three months. So whatever program you're running, take all the exercises and do them unilaterally. So all the barbell exercises, do them dumbbell, one arm, one leg at a time. And, and if you copy the stronger side with the weaker side, make sure the weaker side dictate, dictates the weights and the reps, but the form is perfect on both sides, then you'll you'll naturally start to correct these imbalances just by doing that alone. Yeah, I mean, obviously this, this really matters to know 
what the imbalance is to yeah. give like really good advice. I think that's pretty good mm -hmm. general advice. I think for the most part. Would you guys agree like 80% of the way there? You yeah, would say I, I would say a, a large percentage yeah. of imbalances or, or discrepancies from left to right could be solved for the most part by training unilateral, focusing on the weaker side first, mirroring that with the stronger side. But I mean, you could have imbalances too, where you like where someone has like upper cross syndrome, and they're you know they're yeah, yeah. The over shoulders keep yeah forward, and so and unilateral work is not necessarily going to be the biggest benefit for them as much as would be addressing right. the you know re being able Which to retract is where your priming ahead of time really makes a, an impact with that and like assessing that first right to know that like you know my tendencies uh, are to kind of form into this type of posture just naturally, so I have to prep and set myself up so I'm actually in good position when I go to perform the exercises. So if you can figure that out and you find like the one to two like real impactful type of mobility set uh, uh, exercises ahead of time and then also like apply some you know, lateral training. Yeah, like, if, this was, if this was a live caller, we would give them maps prime and map symmetry. Yes. And we'd say, you know, figure out, you know, where you're, do the zone tests, um, incorporate some of the movements to address whatever tests you failed within, build it within your program. And you could even do a lot of those things on your off days and then follow map symmetry, use all the unilateral work between the two of those. Um, you could do it. And that doesn't mean that you can't, cause I know this person's asking like if they could integrate it into their program, you could, you could technically take the, you know, the point Sal's making about unilateral work and you could just change out whatever, like say you weren't mm -hmm. following our program, you're following somebody else's and everywhere where it's bilateral, right? You just change it to unilateral yep. work, dumbbell work. Well, uh, and that would work plus with prime exercises. Yeah. Ideally, like this is kind of like how you check up. I think unilateral training is a good one to kind of see like how egregious some of those imbalances are, which then will take you a little further. If it's, if it's to a point where you're starting to feel kind of pain and, uh, you know, dysfunction when you're going to lift, like that's where we kind of regress a bit. We work a little further on our, our prime and our mobility, our joint specific um, function. And then if it's even worse than that, then we go into prime pro, which then we can get, you know, all those nuances and corrective type of an approach. I really don't like the, the movement that I see right now happening in our, have you guys seen that? I brought it up the other day on the show. Like there's like a, there's a big counter movement to like the you know, being symmetrical and this yeah. idea of like, you know, you're, you're never going to be able to beat asymmetry. It's always going to have, nobody is perfectly symmetrical on sure. each side. It's like, and so there's this obvious. argument, but it's not like, a bad yeah. target. No, it's, I, I think it's incredibly important for people it's to like never striving for perfection in anything. Right? No, like, yeah. just cause I can't achieve it. It's because it's because the benefits of correctional work mobility have become finally popular. They weren't popular just a decade ago. You're right. They finally have become popular. Now it's the cool thing is to, you know, find a way to make an argument in case why that's a waste of your yeah. time. Now, it's not I, a big I deal. guess I could see in some cases where that's like, like too much of an emphasis. Like we all knew that trainer that was all about ridiculous, like, emphasis Stability. on yes and yeah. they never did like the, the traditional yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and they never did the guy. traditional like muscle building strength building stuff so they missed out on that there's definitely a balance but this new counter movement is just that it's no just, you're, how you're, do right, I get you're right sal that's a, and I, I know that's what's promoted it right because i know that some of these people that are that are promoting this message are, are smart and i know that they are countering the people that have now overcorrected right yeah. we went from not putting any emphasis on correctional work or mobility work or any of that stuff to now all of a sudden it's like everything's built around it your entire routine is all this stuff and so i get that that's the, the counter movement and the truth isn't uh you know one uh, one is right the other one is wrong it's somewhere in the middle it's understanding that that there's tremendous value for mm -hmm. most people to figure out the your in, imbalances they have left to right or any discrepancies they have in, in a in a basic squat pattern and then go try and address that through mobility and correctional work like there's a tremendous value in that and so to you know throw it out completely just because some people over over apply it and abuse I it. had so I had uh, this an exceptional physical therapist that worked with me years ago in my studio. And she was, I mean, she was one of the best people I ever worked with when it came to correctional exercise, but she knew very little about traditional strength training. And so I borrowed a lot from her and she borrowed a lot from me. So she would have patients coming in who needed correctional exercise work and she would apply what she knew. And then she would apply traditional barbell work and they got far better results. And then for me, of course, with my clients, I learned exception. So the, the value is across the board. It's not one or the other, it's both. And yes, you can go too far in one direction or the other.
Next question is from Jamie Nicolette 15. Can using knee sleeves to squat actually make you lose muscle over time? Oh, that's a funny one. Yeah, no. So knee sleeves are different than knee wraps. Uh, knee sleeves are, they're somewhat tight, but really what they do is they provide- Make you look serious. <laughs> yes. If you have knee sleeves on, like people know that this, this, this guy's dude, about to work it's out. going down. This dude yeah. works out. Yeah. I, you know, there's it's interesting, right? I don't know if you guys have ever used them, but that external- pressure and it's mild it's not like wraps mm -hmm. uh, the warmth it, it gives you this kind of uh, you know this this effect on the on the joint where it feels like it's got more range of motion yeah, this crazy false confidence yeah, yeah and you just you feel a little bit oh, better i feel when like you move. It, i feel like it gives you a, a sense of more stability that's what it feels like to me it does but what's funny is it's like the compression pants i know you felt that difference when i you did put it. it's like come on let's be honest these these tights are not making me way stronger but there is this sense of yes when it's all tight and compressed like that i feel more stable i think that's how the, the what's it called this the Correctional tape. What's that tape called? K Y K K T K Y. <laughs> no, not K T. We know your head's going. Not that. No, not Justin. that. Jelly tape. Not that. Um, yeah, it's K T. No. Right? It's called. Is it K T? Right? Yeah, physio tape. Thank physio you. tape. Thank you, Andrew. Thank Andrew. you. Thank Andrew is all over. Doug, you take Rock a couple tape. days off. I know. And this guy is <laughs> way faster. Dude. <laughs> Doug's so insecure about that. You're upset. <laughs> yeah, I'll just walk out now. <laughs> no, no, don't do that, Doug. I don't fuck with you. No, yeah. so I, that's how the tape works too, right? Right. It's not. It's not really providing stability I and mean, it's on your skin. It's not going to do anything, but because it's creating this kind of sensation, feedback, this ex yeah, external, you know, feedback like sensation, support, yeah. it, your CNS fires a little differently and it gives you this sense of increased stability. Now knee wraps do provide stability. Knee wraps are on really tight. I don't like knee wraps though, unless you're going to compete in powerlifting because when you wear knee wraps, first off, it allows for worse form. You get away with, with worse form to the pressure on the patella uh, you could cause issues because the patella has to slide, uh, you know, on the femur as you're squatting and moving, and you could well, increase the chance of things like chondromalacia, right? Yeah. Where the the I mean, cartilage underneath the patella. In, in in terms of muscle development too, like because yet yeah, like to that point of being able to then uh, lift a bit more than you can actually physically stabilize, yeah. right? So it's like if you're doing just everyday functional movements and now you have all this like excess of strength uh that is you could fire on command like let's say you just like do some crazy like fast movement uh fast but, twitch movement but you don't then, have all the you don't have the stability to to yeah. coincide with that that's where we're vulnerable yeah knee sleeves don't make that big of a difference but they do can feel good knee wraps will make i don't know if you guys ever used knee wraps before but i've I done could, i've done both but I, the, I the like question them. is are you gonna lose muscle you're not gonna no. lose muscle from if you wear knee wraps or something all the time maybe but not while you're working out no um, no you're not no, you're not gonna you're not gonna lose messes up your recruitment pattern lose. yeah but it, there isn't like I mean, I went through a kick, right? And I think I made. You did the, the sleeves or the wraps? Both. I've done uh, both. Yeah, no, I went on kicks of, of trying both. The the wraps, I feel the 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 coil effect. Oh yeah, right, because it's so tight, and when it and you, to come, oh, I'll add twenty pounds in my squat with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there's definitely a a recoil effect that you get from yeah, from that the last elastic energy. Yeah, potential and, and then the knee wraps are like I said, it just, you yeah. just feel like the compression pants. You just yeah. feel a little. Uh, but I mean, again, it's not. Uh, I'm not competing in powerlifting. The only time when I went through a kick like that is when I was really trying to see how high I could get my squat mm -hmm. up to, and so that that was like the real purpose of even utilizing them. I would you you wouldn't catch me using them right now at all. There's no point. Yeah, it's, it's I guess it's mostly just the feel thing. But you, the question you're always going to ask yourself is, do I need this? It, or is it just something I enjoy? Because if it becomes something you need, you probably want to address stability or address why you need something external to allow you to be able to work out in a particular way. Like why you would need to rub, you know, cold cream on your joints or why you would need to wear elbow sleeves or knee sleeves. There's something there that should probably be addressed. Because in my experience, people are like, oh, my knees hurt. Oh, knee, knee sleeves help. Let me keep putting knee sleeves on. Over time, mm -hmm. the knee pain gets worse and worse. And then the knee sleeves no longer help. And right. then they got to move to something else. And it just becomes more of an issue because they never targeted uh, the root cause. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have free guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. 
Today, we're gonna to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me, it was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique.